Good evening. My name is Joanne Aquino, and I am a grade 6 teacher. One time, I asked my students to write an essay about their most unforgettable moment. One of my students, let's call her Maria, wrote that she will never forget that experience when she was in grade 2. It was a school celebration of career month. Their teacher asked them to dress up as a professional that they want to be when they grow up. She chose to wear a soldier costume because that's what she wants to be in the future. However, the moment she entered the classroom, there were a group of boys who laughed at her. One of them said in a loud voice, Girls could not be a soldier. It's for boys. She was taken aback and was so embarrassed during those moments. I also remember this little boy when I was in the library one time. I saw him chose a book with a pink cover about a princess. When he was observing which type of books his friends were getting, he rapidly put the book back in the shelf and got a book about a superhero. Maybe he was thinking that if his friends saw him getting the coat and uncoat girly book, he will be bullied and teased in front of everybody. After all, he's a boy. A lot of people believe that pink books are only for girls. Many still ignorantly affirm that our society is not sexist anymore. But how can they say that if even common expressions carry sexist implications? I'd like you to think about two expressions that for sure you have heard before. Act like a girl and act like a man. When people say act like a girl, act like a lady to a woman, they often mean that you have to be sweet, delicate, beautiful, passive, weak, irrational, submissive, emotional. When people say act like a man, they often mean that you have to be rational, strong, decisive, powerful, successful. Gender equality is needed because boys who don't do boy things, who want to play with dolls instead of cars, who wants to wear pink clothes instead of blue ones are bullied. Gender equality is needed because women are paid less than men for the same job position in so many places. Gender equality is needed because we still have meanings for act like a girl and act like a man. Gender equality is needed because girls can't be a soldier Boys can't read pink books. As we can see, our lovely sexy society still exists and something must be done to eradicate this gender inequality. In some countries like India, for example, poor families don't send girls to school. Their reason is that they have to help their parents do the house chores and look after their young siblings while their parents try to make a living. Aside from that, they would say that girls would eventually get married, so education is not a necessity. In Uganda, most of the girls don't go to school. Their parents would say, why should we spend money on her education? She's just going to spend most of her life logging water back and forth. These are sad realities. Now, let us talk about gender and development. But before that, let us differentiate sex and gender. Well, we often use sex and gender interchangeably, but there are important differences. Generally, sex is biological, while gender is social. Masculine and feminine are gender categories, Male and female are sex categories. Being a male or female is fixed. It is same 
throughout the world no matter where you are located. But your gender depends on where in the world you grow up. For example, in some parts of the world, medicine is seen as something that should be taken by men, while in other parts of the world, medicine is considered a subject for girls, so most doctors are female. In the Philippines, most of the teachers are women. For most of us, education is seen as a field of study for women, while engineering is a field of study for men. So, it depends on what kind of cultural background you belong to. Now, let us try to differentiate gender equality and gender equity. Gender equality focuses on the processes by which we ensure that both men and women can become whatever they want to be. Both men and women should have an equal access to opportunity. For example, both boys and girls should have an equal access to education. We should never stop someone from getting an education just because she is a girl. There must be an equal access to opportunity. Gender equity, on the other hand, focuses on the outcome. We are not just interested in both boys and girls being in school. We are interested in both boys and girls doing well in school. We should see to it that both boys and girls are doing equally well. That is gender equity. That is also why schools have a budget for GAD or gender and development. Do you know how much should be allocated in GAD programs? At least 5% of the maintenance and other operating expenses or MOOE in schools. Including GAD in schools MOOE is beneficial so as early as school age, the issues and concerns regarding gender can be properly addressed. As school administrators and teachers, we have to see to it that the budget allocated for God or gender and development is spent to address such issues and concerns. God funds must be spent judiciously. So hindi lang po natin gagamitin ang God budget sa swimming, outing, or team building. There is a greater purpose for that, and that is to inculcate in the young minds of our students the value of building a just and equal society. At a very tender age, we can steal in their mind that no matter how young they are, they can contribute in achieving a vision of a gender fair and a gender responsive community. We have already defined gender, now let us talk about development. These are some of the terms that we generally think of when we talk about the world development. According to Kwesi Kwapra, a Ghanaian sociologist, development is the improvement and upliftment of the quality of life of people to attain potential, build and acquire self-confidence, that they can live lives that are worthy of accomplishments. A life that is dignified. The emphasized words here are improvement and upliftment. According to Amartya Sen, an economist and a Nobel Prize awardee, development is an expansion of real freedoms that people can enjoy. So for him, development is ensuring that people have real freedoms. So it's not just about gross national products or rise in personal income. It is ensuring that those things translate into an expansion of real freedoms. For example, if you have a lot of money, but you are not able to access entertainment in the country you live, there is no expansion of real freedom in there. You simply have money, but the money should be able to translate into real freedom for you. Note that in two definitions, they look at development as improving lives, uplifting lives, and expanding 
freedoms. It's basically about giving people more options in life. The United Nations takes issues of development seriously. Every year, each country is required to issue a human development report. The United Nations Millennium Declaration, signed in September 2000, committed world leaders to combat poverty, hunger, disease, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and discrimination against women. The MDGs have been superseded by the Sustainable Development Goals, a set of 17 integrated goals that build on the achievement of the MDGs but are broader, deeper, and far more ambitious in scope. Now, why is gender a development issue? Remember that we mentioned a while ago that development is changing people's lives by improving their quality of life. Yet, when we look at every single aspect of life, we can see that it is gendered. What happens at home is gendered. What happens at work is gendered. Social relation and access to opportunities are gendered. When we say gendered, we mean that there is a double standard between a man and a woman. In this day and age, we still have a double moral standard that are used to judge the same acts depending on whether they were done by a woman or a man. One of the most common examples is the statement that men having an affair is just a normal thing while women having an affair is a mortal sin. See? Double standards. Unfair treatment. This must be stopped. But we have to take note that the higher the equality between genders, the more advanced the country is. The first table presents the 10 countries in the world with the highest level of gender equality. The ranking is based on the gender equality index. On the right column, we can see the rank of the countries in terms of human development index. Now we can see that the countries with the highest level of gender equality are pretty much the same countries on the top list of developed countries. Now the second table shows the bottom of that list. The same story here. The countries with the lowest level of gender equality are also at the bottom list of development. So we have a fairly straightforward correlation between gender equality and development. It only shows that the inclusion of women in economy is important for development. Countries that give equal opportunities to women are usually economically developed. The market economy also needs women. The idea that the only role of women is to take care of the kids and do house chores is no longer acceptable. The economy needs both men and women. The growth of the economy depends on human capital, which is people. Removing people from the economy means removing workers and skills who can build and grow companies. Some studies have proven that women are better at some things than men. So, by removing women from the workforce is not good for economy. It's a good thing that here in the Philippines, gender equality is not really a problem. I could say that we rarely have issues as far as the gender equality is concerned. Our country is at the middle of the ranking for gender equality, as well as human development index. Of course, the economic empowerment of women has many direct and indirect effects that are hard to measure, but they create their impact by improving general well-being and harmony. It allows family to be less vulnerable to poverty, because when women also work, Income for the family is higher. It also allows women to be economically independent and not be forced to stay in unhappy marriages or violent ones, and so on and so on. More often than not, 
Most development policy might look neutral, but eventually, in the course of its implementation, some sort of gender bias might arise. So, I encourage each and every one of us to take action. We as PhD students, future policymakers, when we create a program or implement a policy, we have to see to it that such programs or policies actually expand, improve, and uplift conditions for both men and women. Thank you and God bless everyone.